most of you guys here are pretty new to Cosmo, and uh, you know, life of a startup is a pretty different culture. It's a different environment. It's a different pace. You guys are going to witness and experience chaos. It's your job to control that. You know, it's like a, you know, you know, taking the tiger by the tail. You just got to hold on because it's a, it is a one wild ride. It's like riding one of the most emotional roller coaster rides you will ever be on, where the highs are higher than, you know, take whatever the most incredible experience you ever had, multiply that by 10, and you're getting close to the feeling, the satisfaction of building something from nothing and seeing that thing grow like the Dickens. But the lows are lower than the most depressed moment of your entire life. <laughs> Goldman Sachs uh, before I started this. That's a big investment bank and I was in the LA office. This was back in 1996 and uh, was ready to buy my first book online through Amazon. Everything about it was great except when I got to the checkout page I got hit with these delivery options like UPS three to five business days. I got so frustrated that I turned off my computer and I drove to uh, Barnes & Noble and while I was waiting in that checkout line that's when I realized what I just did. I said, time out, wait a minute, what just happened here? I was an Amazon customer, but they lost me because they couldn't fulfill one basic need. That need being, I wanted the book today. I thought, you know, terrific idea, terrific concept. I uh, didn't know that much about the internet at that time, so I spent the next few weeks just studying uh, some of the popular sites out there. We said to ourselves, all right, two bankers, no websites, we don't even know how to write or build a website. It was, uh, it was a big risk. Uh, my parents thought that I was crazy. Uh, I don't think they still understand to this day what we, what we do. We dipped into our entire life savings, which wasn't much, and totally maxed our credit cards out, went to our respective families. And then from there, uh, with that money in place, uh, we started looking to find someone to build the website or a prototype of the website. I heard about these two yahoos from NYU who had this crazy idea to make, you know, to do delivery of, uh, you know, videos and whatever else uh, in under an hour. Of course, it was an incredibly interesting concept, but, you know, it was just like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? What are these guys talking about? Messengers through the internet? What? You know, we would advertise online, you know, come work at a really great, fast, internet company with the best idea in the world. Yeah, it was like, uh, it was his apartment, you know, his laundry was on the, on the couch and everything. And uh, definitely struck, you know, I was definitely taken aback. Like, you know, try to convince them, all right, forget about everything you see around us. You know, forget about the dirty kitchen behind me. Forget about the fact that uh, there is no legitimate website, there is no business. But the thing was that what he did was that he took this, like, this presentation, which was like that thick, um, you know, plopped it in front of me and said, leaped, leaped through it. It was just like, 
This is the greatest thing since sliced bread. This is totally going to work. Yeah. I was like literally telling people yes. to close their eyes and imagine this time when no one would ever go to a physical store ever again to buy anything. And what we would do is we would deliver everything to them in under an hour. Basically, everyone said no. <laughs> came on board, you know, I, you know, I was really worried about finding a place and you know, then what happened is just said, hey, you know, why don't you live at Cosmo? Yeah, but Joe, there's no shower here. What do you do? And he goes, oh, I go to Crunch. What ended up happening is Joe and I would actually go to different crunches and I would use his password. So I would go to people, I go, yeah, I'm Joseph Park. We had no air conditioning. We had all our servers in the basement with us, like, and all with the six of us. Too. Yeah, and computers. you know, there's a, there's a skylight where sunlight pours now. So it was literally about 95, 98 degrees in there, with three guys who don't shower at all. <laughs> out of the I shower. Okay, now he did, he did shower a couple of days. <laughs> I don't know why. I was a little confused. I think I thought that there was a company going, you know, going on some kind of business, but I saw a lot of like empty boxes. Originally, like. When we first got that warehouse, it was, it was, he was, I mean, he was like, all right, I'm moving in, you know, and like there was a futon. And I've come know, in, I came like, into work several times to find Joe actually sleeping under my desk. Yeah, dude, look at your bike messenger and the, and the programmer. <laughs> Probably in the first initial um, six months that we were open. So you had Yana, who was like 6'5", and Joe, who's like, I don't know, 5'6". I don't know how tall he is. You know, a little Asian guy. <laughs> and, but every day, Joe would be like, Yana, you're going down. <laughs> It'll beat your record. Because, you know, Yana obviously had the fastest record going down there. But he ran a red light at the corner of Broadway and Canal. He actually got swiped by a cat. You know, tumbled off of the the windshield, landed on the on the uh, pavement. I saw his bike helmet later. There were like dents in it and everything. But the thing that he did he took his his walkie-talkie. He was like, "Mayday, mayday! I need a rescue. I'm at Canal and Broadway. I need someone to take these orders, or they're going to be late." But uh, here was the CEO of our company getting hit by a cab. You know, and the first thing that came to his mind was making sure that the customer got the, those orders on time. So, yeah, it was. I mean, it was totally hardcore and incredibly too intense. <laughs> And like a little way over for it. Probably about a month ago, I got an email from uh, someone from Amazon, uh, and he said, I'm we're really interested in what you're doing at Cosmo. And Jeff has been bugging me for the past two weeks to get in touch with you. I flew up to Seattle that that one uh, you know that one day and uh, you know met with him and spent about an hour and a half with him, you know, over pizza. Now like I'm just talk we're just talking to so many people who I used to read about in the Wall Street Journal <laughs> and now they're talking to me. Um, I was at Federal Express and uh, had significant activity with recruiters that were uh, coming inside FedEx and trying to lure people away. And I had a recruiter that called me and told me about Cosmo. It was just a culture and an adventure and a sense of mission that, that appealed to me. Your boss, but your boss, your boss knows that you're leaving. For the first time. The average age of the company is moving up from 25 years of age to after uh, the 30s. Well, you know, hopefully I'm young enough where I can I can relate to uh, most of the folks. It's uh, it's exciting. It's Are there people there that you would want to bring with you? It's hard to predict okay. what's going to happen six months from now or a year from now. Whereas in most companies, you have you have an idea what the the landscape is going to look like six months from now. Here, it'll, it, it's I couldn't have predicted what hap what would happen today six weeks ago. Seven star today. Mm -hmm. Is there enough room upstairs? Yeah. There is? Mm-hmm. As far as I know. But this way nobody's complained to me yet.